Come up this week on Kiss My Collectibles, find out our top five unproduced collectibles. Stay up to date with the show and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Become a member of our brand new Patreon and receive exclusive updates and benefits. We're here with Ed from ClickTShop.com and he wants to tell us about an awesome giveaway he's doing. Ed, tell us about it. Yeah, so I'm tying in uh, a giveaway with Andrew's movie that's coming out on June 28th, Kiss at Midnight. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to do a t-shirt giveaway, sticker giveaway, and a fine art print. So you could uh, win one of these awesome Click Tea Shop t-shirts. And I have the stickers here, the, which are all my designs from my shop. And then is my fine art that I've actually produced myself. And if you're the winner on June 28th, we'll announce them, the, the winner, and place it online for everybody to see who the winner is. <laughs> so that, that's really cool. Everybody loves your designs, but uh, we love them so much. How do we enter this contest? Kiss at Midnight comes out June 28th, so how can you enter this contest to be a winner on June 28th? Yeah, it's really simple. All you have to do is go to clicktshop.com. It's click T-Shop with a K. And just go to the Contact Us form, and in the Contact Us form, all you have to do is fill out your name and your email, and just put in Kiss at Midnight into the comments section. Hit Submit, and you're already entered. That's awesome. how easy it is. Awesome, awesome. So win great merchandise from Click T Shop, and make sure you enjoy Kiss at Midnight on June 28th, coming to you on YouTube and Vimeo. This is uh, Kiss My Collectibles podcast, but you knew that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Kiss My Collectibles. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Herndon, and with me, as always, is... No, I don't always shave. No, I haven't always shaved. Andrew Scambatti. And uh, Yusef Lalish. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder, like, how deep our viewers go in, like, the Kiss lore. <laughs> like, do they know that... I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just quoting lines from Kiss videos. Do you think they know that? Should I stop? Uh, I, I know that. Okay. You, know, you're, you always do the Stevie Nicks thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know that you often attempt to try and be funny. I'm yes. actually very funny in my own time. Are you? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's like my wife who has to explain her jokes to me and my daughter, and we always tell her, if you have to explain your jokes to I us... Never... You, know, you the, are not funny. The only thing <laughs> yeah. I'm going to explain is that if you want to help the channel grow, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be notified when new episodes are being posted. Join our groups on Facebook, Kiss My Collectibles, Kiss My Wax. Check out the website, but also make sure you head on over to clickteshop.com to get yourself some Kiss My Collectibles and Kiss My Wax swag. But it doesn't end there. Make sure you visit patreon.com slash kissmycollectibles and become an unofficial member of the show. Benefits are coming soon, I promise. They're being made in our warehouse in China right now. So just <laughs> just bear with us a little bit more on that. And that's all she wrote, folks. See you later. That was and actually Andrew fantastic. Yeah, he did it like a professional. He didn't yeah. even have notes. He said he said before the show, I don't even need notes. And look at him. He just tears it up like a like a <laughs> grizzled veteran. It's awesome. That's why you guys keep me on the show, because it, when it, it comes time to talk like that, I can do it. Yeah, J it's, Jason you know, has no idea what's going on. And that is the only reason why Jason keeps you on the show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're still trying to figure out, why, to figure out. I, why I'm even here. I have no idea. But we, here we, I am. Yeah, just, just. But yeah. uh, well, actually, here, Joe, tell us what we're talking about today. We are talking about the... So we're doing an Essentials podcast on the five things that are missing in action. Things that we think should be in everybody's KISS collection that don't exist yet. That we wish KISS would put out or somebody affiliated with the KISS camp would put out. Yeah, this yeah. will be a fun discussion episode because, yeah. you know, the, the, it's limitless. You know, we, you could come up with anything. So I can't wait to see all of the comments in the YouTube comments section and, on, and in the groups of what people are going to come up with that they think Kiss should be making. Yeah, you know? yeah. What do, you, what do you think Kiss should put out? You know, this is a band, and I've said this so many times before, that this is the, the most visual band of all time, and there's been so many missed opportunities. So I'm really excited to talk about the missed opportunities today, but let's show some new stuff. 
Let's do it. You want me to go first? Who's going first? Yeah. Who's, right. who's? I'll go first. I only have one if you want me to go first. I mean, I have two I've only things. Got one as well. I have two things, but I wanted to show this. Um, just All right, well, I know, you go first. I know everybody else has picked this up, but this is the German Best of the Solo Albums uh, reissue that just came out. I just got yeah. it yesterday. And, Mine uh, is on the way. What's cool about this is, first of all, it's the it's so heavy. I can't wait for you guys to get this. This is this yeah. has got to be more than 180 gram. But look at how beautiful this. I was I was just gonna ask, is it as beautiful in person as it is in the comps? Because we know that that in yes. the past that hasn't maybe necessarily been the, the truth, and there has been this... a lot of whinging in the groups about how oh it's not this and that. This looks that great. one looks it looks this, awesome. This looks great. It sounds Kill great. It. It's heavy. <laughs> Something about the plain black sleeve takes me back to, you know, on I, I know. And uh, I'm just, I, I'm super, super pumped to get this. I mean, this is one that I saw it go up and I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'll get this. It takes me back to being at a flea market when I was very, very young. And I purchased one of the original ones of this, but it had some water damage on one of the corners. So I think I got it for like, I don't know, two or three dollars. So well, to have one like this is very cool. So far, Germany, you know, with their two reissues, they're, they're getting it right. They're, They're absolutely killer. knocking it out of the park. Uh, pretty sure that uh, Michael Kohler in, in the group has something to do with this. I'm not sure. I haven't discussed mm -hmm. with him, but I'm pretty sure that he is working somehow with them on this because, you know, he's got some inside information. But whatever they're doing over there, they're, they're doing it right. That actually dovetails into yeah. the very next discussion, uh, the top five reasons why I hate both of you. Oh. And the number one reason why I hate both of you is we're talking about thank, these and we're talking thank God about it's only five. We're talking about uh, <laughs> uh, other records, and I just went on Amazon.de to purchase the double platinum one. So That's if you right. haven't done so, make sure you head on over to Amazon.de to see if you can purchase one of the double platinum reissues. I don't want to talk about it too much. I know one of you guys are going to show it. Um, That's right. But I, I do, was going to say, but I want to show the last thing in my collection. This is just something that uh, that a friend of mine gave me, and I've always wanted it. And I, I know there's another one that's available. Uh, but this is the 1989 Billboard magazine, and there's a yep. ton of Kiss content in here. I mean, just a, a ton of, of information. Like, uh, like, like, look at this stuff. I mean, this you never see stuff like this anymore. Uh, just like, just things like this, and just you know, to have this in, in the collection is, is very, very cool. Like I said, I know there's other Billboard magazines that are not all Kiss, but very Kiss centric um, in there. And there's something interesting here because I just, <coughs> I just. Turn to this page, and I wanted to get your guys' opinion on this. Um, so what's really cool about that, just to jump in real quick, yeah. it, oftentimes you see, you know, Kiss would be emblazoned on a cover somewhere of some magazine, and as a kid, or whenever you picked it up, you, you, you'd you open it up, and you'd find that there were three pages on the inside on Kiss, and you'd be totally bummed. So it's cool when they put them on the cover, and then there's like a nice um, sort of juicy section about them in there, you know, multiple pages and there's all kinds so of cool many, stuff. There's so. so much cool stuff, like <clears throat> a lot of companies at the time that are congratulating Kiss on 15 That's years. That's great. Can you right. believe it? This this was Kiss's 15, they were 15 years old. It's mind-boggling to think that the band has continued for this long uh, after this, when 15 years was considered a huge milestone. I mean, now we're at 45 years. I mean, there's so many congratulations. There's Rock Scene Magazine, Metal Mania Magazine, Sam Ash Music Stores. So, I mean, some, this, is, this is something that, that's, that's very, very cool. And uh, the, the, one of the coolest things about this is going to be this little <coughs> centerfold right here. Oh, neat. Yeah. That so, is very cool. Really cool. So yeah. it's, in, it's in great shape. And uh, so I, I do want to send a huge thank you to Mike Namoli for, for hooking me up with that. And uh, hopefully we'll get Mike on a show here in the future because I love this guy to death. And uh, I really, really, yeah. uh, really, really um, enjoy everything that he does for me and uh, for the Kiss Collecting community. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody out there that's seen Kiss more than Mike Namoli. So. Uh, Russ, Russell Daniker. Uh, they were oh, yeah, well, and, and that, I think that as, too, yeah. And I think they, they were, I think Russ may have, because Russ has been going, Mike stopped going in 2014. So, uh, but I think Russ is continuing on. So Russell Daniker might be the number one. But, uh, you know, if anybody doesn't know who Mike Namoli is, just watch the Shout Out Loud video, New York Kiss Army license plate. That's him. That's right. That's him. So from Andrews, Best of the Soul albums from Germany. I'm going to show the double platinum from Germany, and uh, I haven't opened this yet, so I'm going to open it on the air. Ooh. And uh, Ooh, yeah, and, and Joseph has it too. Jo oh, well. Joseph, Joseph, Yousef, Yousef for this. has one too. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they, you know, they replicated the lovely pipe sticker with all the songs and everything. Yeah. Um, Which you know what you know what's funny about that is I. Um, 
I obviously had a USA copy in the 80s, and I had it never dawned on me why the songs weren't on there. <laughs> it never did. It yeah. just never dawned on me. Right. So, um, you know, the, this is not embossed. It's not a foil cover. But what they've done is they've went back and they've replicated, you know, another uh, 80s issue of this with the in, inside, which, which we'll show here in a second. But let me, let me pop this puppy open here. Are you allowed to use sharp items like that? Well, they tell me that the, the, the doctor said just for this, just for this week only. Just for this week only. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's open this thing up. I've got another couple of copies coming, so I'll be able to keep keep some sealed. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the bottom of a pile somewhere. Gomer. Yeah, that's right. Bottom of Gomer pile. Ah ha ha. Somebody vamp while I'm taking this off. Go ahead, Andy. All right. No? So this is what they did on the gatefolds. That's so cool. It's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty pretty killer, man. What I think is interesting, and it reminds me of the Dynasty commercial, is you have these awesome live shots, then you have that Peter studio shot. Do you guys remember in the Dynasty commercial that they had the guys walk in towards the camera, but with Peter, they just had they were just zoomed in on a picture. That's what yeah. that reminds me of. So they replicated the Platinum Award, and they they've got the German logo all over it. That's <clears> great. What, so cool. What's uh you know so we've got you know the sound of vinyl in the U.S. is doing all of these colored vinyl reissues, but essentially what they are doing is they're reusing components of the 2014 releases, including all the way down to labels. So we're getting colored vinyl in 2019 on 2014 labels with 2014 jackets and everything, but these are all brand new and um, they all say 2019 on them somewhere. So this comes in a in that black sleeve too. Hey, that's pretty cool. It's more than cool. It, it, that's, it's abs- that's, that's awesome. It reminds me of the, the Spaceman vinyl. It is so, so mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. So you know, at the bottom down here on the label, well, I was pretty sure that someone said it said 2019 on it somewhere. Somewhere this thing says two. Yeah, it says 19. This compilation 1978 and 2019 Cap- Casablanca Records. So very cool. Brand new labels. It's got the German logo. Very They're cool. absolutely beautiful, and I hope Germany releases the entire catalog as well. Do so. you know? Do you know what I'm going to do? You show me that award. I'm going to do it with my 2014 American award. Uh, but the next time I see Gene, I'm going to have Gene sign the award. Sign the award? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's right. also cool because it gives people an opportunity to buy. Man, take that vinyl out of the sleeve, you heathen. Where am I going to put it right now? I don't have a plastic sleeve on it yet. Always store it behind. I'm sorry, Joe. Jason just really offended me. Andrew, I do not have a <laughs> sleeve on this record yet. I, it was still sealed. <laughs> Everybody relax. Everybody power it down. Okay, okay. Power it down. You're saying, right, so what, you No, know, I was just saying it's nice because people have an opportunity to buy double platinum in a different format in, you know, on vinyl where, yeah. where they didn't have that opportunity unless you bought the box set from years ago, right? <laughs> That's the thing. So, you know, double platinum was one of the uh, Kisteria ex- yeah. Yeah. exclusives and you could not buy it individually. Yep. So this is the first time, you know, in the modern vinyl era that double platinum has been available to purchase by everyone who didn't want to spend two thousand dollars for a box set. So um But it's also it, markedly different, which is really cool. It's not like markedly they came out different. and undercut it. So, you know, it's got all the German logos, so there's a there's a very clear delineation. A why between. someone would want both. Exactly. Well, it, it'll be interesting, in my opinion, to see where <clears throat> these uh sound of vinyl anniversary re, uh, colored vinyl ed- editions go because it seems like they're doing the entire catalog will they touch on some of those exclusives because in 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 Kisteria we had double platinum and killers and then you know stuff like smashes uh, you know that were exclusives will they do a double platinum colored vinyl edition in the US for individual purchase I don't know we'll see you know obviously wow. lots well, is coming guys, do you guys remember when these were first announced and I think we were all at indie and they were kind of it was like trickling out there it wasn't a huge mm-hmm. announcement it was just a, just something that that was just trickling out there <clears throat> and I think when they were announced everybody was kind of like are these real yes. like what's right. going on because there was yeah there was no like big splashy announcement yes. you know I um 
I always assumed or I I had hoped that they would also reissue the American version of Double Platinum. Um, but it doesn't look – I mean, if they do, it's not coming. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. You have it, no idea. You yeah, have no it, idea. If, the, if they do, I'm going to buy that. There are five records. Five records in on the colored vinyl sound of found sound of vinyl reissues. I mean, there's no telling. To to me, everything is coming. It looks like everything is coming. So we'll just which, see. Which now that to me gets a little squirrely. For if you say that the double platinum from Kiss, I mean, unless I mean, obviously it's going to be a colored vinyl edition and all that stuff. But I so I don't think that from a value standpoint, I don't think this infringes on the value at all I of the Kisteria version. Completely. Version, however, if you came out with a new US version that's super close to what they did with Kisteria, except for maybe it's a colored vinyl version. Does that kill the value of that of it's that good Kisteria question. exclusive? It's so good I don't know. it's, Wait, a, it's it, gonna be a clear variant. Yeah, so but does it matter at this point? Because for but all it's intents and so purposes close, somebody would go, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna throw it in my Kisteria box set and you know what I mean? Maybe, so it'll but, just be interesting to see when you know with the proliferation of these yeah, records it'll be yeah, it I happens. Agree with you. I agree. <clears throat> Joe, what'd you, Joe what do you, what do you got? So I had a couple of episodes back. I had talked about the uh, Lick It Up Peruvian um, promo copy that I had gotten. Um, that's a really tough record to get. Um, and we had talked about maybe not having seen other versions of this. So this one pops up recently. This is another copy or a different, you know, another promo version from Peru of another record. That's Kiss so Alive cool. is what I'm what I'm showing here. Yeah, and again, this has the this has not a full jacket, but a paper gatefold sleeve here. You can see it there. I'll show the back as well. Uh, for the those of you listening, it's kind of like a beige paper with with. It almost blue looks like that uh, that Kiss Alive two Marine Corps bootleg that someone was peddling years and years ago. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah, it has like, a little like... bit. Yeah, it has a little bit of that look to it. Um, so it it's interesting from the standpoint of here's here's another Peruvian promo that's kind of reared its head and and shown itself in the market. I, I'd love for people to make a comment as to whether they've seen it, whether they have it. Um, here is the here's the label. So it looks like it was scratched out. I don't know if we can see that on the screen or not, but it looks like it was scratched out and then a promo stamp was put over top. Um, so anyway, yeah. So that's that's it's uh, an interesting find, um, and I'd love to. It, it begs the question: Are there others out there? Is how many of how many records uh, were like this? Because I and there's there is no year marking on it that I can see. Um, it's a FilmWorks label, uh, so I, it's interesting to to kind of speculate as to what's going on here. So if anybody what? has any you know information outside of outside of what we have in front of us, it'd be great. Well, I I know that our friend Arjun. Um, from in Europe will have a lot of inf information because he has several of these and I saw them at the Atlanta okay? uh, Expo. Yeah, mm -hmm. saw, him at, saw him at the Atlanta Expo and um, it's so, uh, but I am just not versed in them. So in how genetic, many there are or whatever. Right. Yeah. So if you could if, comment, if you, that would be great because I'm, yeah. I'm a, you know, just saw the, the Kiss, um, you know, the Lick It Up version um, and then this one has sort of <clears> popped up. So I'd love to see which others exist out there. So if anybody right. has extra extra information please share please, down below please do or if you don't share you're banned again banned again. again all right so let's get into our topic gentlemen top five essential missing in action items so who wants to go first who wants to go first i think jason should go first really yeah all right i'll go since, first. since jason's top five consists of two things and one half-assed thing we'll let jason start first and make what him do you sweat mean? We'll mine, mine are four solid things. Four, because and we I, have, because we have, we just, we just promo listen, this as listen, the Joe, five. Leave, leave him alone. He's just a drummer. He could only make it to four when he's counting. Right. Let's just get. That's him, all right. Give him a break. Andrew only has three, so we're. we're <laughs> That's not true. That's not. True. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So I'm the only one prepared. All right. So, um, I was laying in bed thinking about this last night as I often do preparing for these shows at the very last minute. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> no jokes. No jokes. All right. You can you tell all the jokes you want. It's, it's, it's fine. So, all right. Well, the first thing, most of mine center around um, vinyl. 
So, and I was, I'm hoping that I didn't steal any of Joe's cause he did mention a couple in our chat the other day and, and I don't want to steal anything. The good thing about this is for me, a lot of the things that I had hoped would come are starting to come out. Colored vinyl releases. Uh, I'm a, a huge fan of these, um, you know, our official RIAA awards, things like that, that are personalized i just think those are really cool collectibles um solo box set that people have been clamoring for with colored vinyl for years and years yeah yeah. years and years and years so so we're starting to see finally instead of all these tchotchkes like coffee cups and things like that we're finally seeing some thought go into you know these items that are coming out now which is good the bad thing is it made it difficult for me to you know because i can't just say oh i would love to see you know unmasked on you know colored vinyl or something like that but you would assume it's coming it's, yellow. Yeah. It's, it's probably coming so so this is what these these are some of the things that i i thought of so my num- my first thing that i thought of and i've always thought of this for years is i would love to have a colored vinyl version in a box set of the originals and the originals too oh. all, all together didn't you just say that you weren't going to steal any thunder <laughs> from our podcast chat jason I because said- that took that took two of my top five off the list. Did it and really? That was in our podcast chat. What are you doing? I don't remember that. I don't remember. He takes a bulldozer to my list with the first sentence out of his mouth. But well, go let ahead. Me, let me explain something. In the in better explain for, in previous podcasts, long time ago. I didn't uh, watch those. Right. I don't blame you. <laughs> we were we were talking about we were talking about things, and I think it was probably discussed in the originals episode when we had John John Humphrey on. Yeah. <clears throat> There's there's a record company that uh, out there called Audio Fidelity. They're kind of the it's like a boutique shop, right? They're kind of the competitor to Mobile Fidelity, so they do high end audio file mastered from analog sources and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He used to come to us and ask uh, my company, URP Music Distributors, and ask for suggestions that they could go to labels about, and <clears throat> you know, so you know, we would say, well, why don't you do you know, this band on, on, you know, 180 gram audiophile vinyl on colored vinyl. And, and, and a lot of times he would get that approved. So I had mentioned kiss to him and this was probably, this was before the 2014. So this was probably back in 2011 or 12. I had mentioned probably 2012. Hey, here's a list of kiss items. I think that you should, you should, you know, pursue. And one of the things that I mentioned to him was doing the originals and originals to box set. Well, he he sent this proposal over to Universal and they came back and said, thanks, but no thanks. We're already working on, you know, releases. And that's when we got the first that's when I got the first idea that something was going on in the Kiss vinyl world in 2012, 13. You know, they had released the the singles box set and all of that stuff. So so I didn't steal that from you, Joe, from our chat. I, you know, it's something that I talked to that label about. Well, do you guys remember when the remaster, <laughs> I hate to change gears, but the remaster <laughs> CDs came out? Wait, you want to yes. just do the rest of my top five too, Jason? Why don't I'll, you just I'll go sure, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and leave this week. I don't even need to okay. be here. All right. Please Fair stay. Enough. You're, Sorry. Joe, you're Sorry. the reason why I'm still on the show because I, you know, it's just me and Jason. And anyway, do you guys remember it, when the remaster CDs came out? And if you look at the catalog numbers, there's a missing catalog number between Destroyer and Alive. I've never or, noticed that. Or no, excuse me, it's um, it would be between Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over. Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over. Yeah, but yeah. there's a missing catalog number between those because it was assumed that the originals was going to be reissued. So um, I, I'm gonna I'll post a picture in the group later because I'll pull out my my remastered CDs here later. But there was talk of that happening. And then there was this, and you guys may not remember this because um, I, I don't know if it was a regional thing, but there was a collection of Kiss, Hotter Than Hell, Dressed to Kill, and Kiss Alive in an ugly pink clamshell. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In the in the late '90s, early 2000s, and I think that took the place of what was supposed to be the originals. Right. So, and, and again, I'm just piecing together just little nuggets of information I have. You're just I'm, making assumptions. I'm just making a, a, an educated guess that this may they may have wanted to do this at some point. 
Um, but I thought that would have been super cool to have an Originals CD box set. Everybody thinks that. You know, yeah. we've been clamoring for CD or vinyl version yes. reissues of it for years and years and years. Has there? There's never been a reissue of the Originals, right? Am I am I wrong in saying that? You're absolutely correct. not. Not, You're not even the. Um, the Japanese, the is what's it UHM the the CD the S- vinyl S- jacket. Okay, S-H-M? so SHM on the SHM double platinum box set, there were bonus things that came with it, yeah. mm-hmm. and there are two, you know, pretty large sized cards where you can punch those out, mm-hmm. punch mm-hmm. out the originals and the originals too, and you fold them up. I actually did it on an episode one time because I have two different sets and I punched I didn't them watch out. That. You fold them up and you put those the three SHM CDs inside of them, Got and it. that's how Got you it. create your originals and originals. So that's too. the that, closest we've ever come closest, to any yeah. semblance of Th- that. But, was done by that was done by Disc Union Japan, and uh, and they're official. So, but that would be the closest official re- reissue of the originals, originals two that we ever had. But none of the inserts, none of the, the none of the masks from the no. originals two, none of the booklets, <clears throat> stickers, cards, none of no. the stuff. Nope, none of that stuff. So, so that was uh, obviously as much as I've complained about it. Those, both of those, were on my list. I just think they would make for killer box sets. So somebody take that and run with it. It's the it's just like the solo box set. I think you have an awesome opportunity to do something really cool, like with um. And I'll just jump ahead with the originals too, since you've talked about it. But like the um the in-store promo or the the promotional signature card, all the stuff that came, like throw it all in there, all the stuff that you can find from those from those releases, um, OBs, all the stuff, just just get after it and do it because I think yeah. those would be amazing. And you've got the plates, you're ready to go, you don't have to change any of that stuff. Nope. You probably have labels left over, so let's just get after it. Well, yeah. they would, I would hope that they would do new labels because if you I remember, do too, because you, you want they, them to say the original. No, I do too, but... The, but the reality is, we all know that it could very well not happen. You know, right, we've seen right, some yeah, we've right, seen right. some mislabel labeling right. and things like that. But I'm just saying that right. if you were <laughs> wanting to not really do the heavy lifting, there yeah, there's it, the way it to be, go. It would be a fairly easy release. Okay, so I'm going to go a completely different direction with my first thing because you guys, I mean, you guys are huge vinyl collectors, and I kind of fell into vinyl collecting through the original Kiss My Wax podcast. That's right. That's so true. I didn't my, watch my, that. My vinyl, <laughs> my vinyl collection has grown exponentially since then. But before all of this, I wasn't a merchandise collector. I was always a unofficial recordings collector. It, it just fascinates uh, me because we've talked about this many times before. Okay, Kiss, where to God, if you you take, my, comes. You take his... my number two, I'm gonna kill you. Man. Kiss was never Kiss was never a B side band, and to get more Kiss, you oh, no. you you had to go and get other stuff. So my. <laughs> Peanut gallery. Don't say it. My my. I wish that they would release "Rock and Roll Party," the Japanese live recording that was done at the Budokan in '77. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Good. Now you may proceed. Okay. Me and Joe were both sweating. <laughs> yeah. He's already yeah. stolen. Yeah. This is this is something that that has been. I don't know how it got into the fan circle, but there was a recording that was done at the Budokan in '77 that was mixed and mastered by Eddie Kramer because right. this was supposed to be a Japanese only live recording. It's mentioned in several publications, and even some of the tracks from this were used for a live too. I think it, "I Want You" and "Beth" came from these recordings. Um, but this is still one of my favorite things to listen to. The power behind the band at this at this time was just incredible. I think they sounded the best ever on the Rock and Roll Over tour. And for some reason, every time they go to Japan, they sound a little bit cooler. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Kiss being in energy. Japan. Energy. Energy. Yeah, I think There's it's There's so energy, much energy you know? in this band. So this recording is available unofficially, so you could probably get it on YouTube um, you could look. There's someone you know did a bunch of things with it, but uh, I really yeah. Wish a, lo- that a, a lot of people know it as like the Lost Alive. The two Lost Alive Two. Yes. Yeah. So this is a this is a, this is a ten track recording that was recorded at the Budokan in '77. It's more live than Kiss Alive and Kiss Alive Two. Oh yeah. So this yeah. is something so super 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 <laughs> cool. So I wish they could put it out on a CD or a download, and I would get it without hesitation. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's my number one thing that that I want the Lost Alive Two recording. Right. So let me ask a very uninformed question about video since you guys go deep on this stuff. Is that, do I remember correctly, was there an HBO thing in the late 70s or a Jap, a Jap thing from Japan? Is that part of any of that? Well, NHK TV professionally filmed 
two of the shows in Kiss in Japan 1977. It was the April 2nd show, the they filmed the matinee show and the evening show. Correct. So yes. and yeah. they edited both of those together to create that Kiss Live in Japan H they well it was originally edited as called something called the Young Music Show which aired on Japanese TV. Then yeah. later on it was slightly re-edited and HBO in 1979 aired a <clears> version <throat> of the show. Later on in the bootleg circles, the night show, the complete night show, made it to unofficial circles and also was released on Kissology Volume 1. But there were two okay. shows that were taped. Uh, but okay, but that's not what show. you're you're talking about a different recording from a different date uh, that has nothing to do with this or of some the, of it. Some of it was recorded then. I mean, I it, it's very yeah. it, it's tough to determine where the recordings actually came from, but they were done at the Budokan in 77. Right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, cool. Yep. All right, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Since I'm down to like one and a half out of my top five now, thanks to Jason <laughs> swinging the big hammer over there. That's what he does. Um, what about the Eddie Kramer demos? Let's put that on vinyl. Wow. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? I, it would, you know, I was listening to him the other day, and I just you talk about power and energy and a band who just seemed like they were let off the leash and just kicked ass in the studio. To me, that's it. And so I would love I would love to see those tracks on vinyl with the um, you know we, we've seen that image sort of floating around with the handwritten notes on the on the reel on the you know on the actual film canister or the box that they'd have had the the, the you know the the tape uh, canister in um, so yeah that, that I think that would be I think that would be killer if those if those original source tapes exist like can we go back and remaster them remix them engineer them. I think it would be the, killer. The source tapes do exist. They were remastered for the box set. So clearly they're there. They're I, out I there. I was just going to mention Deuce and Strutter appear in the box set. <clears throat> That's so right. Let's throw, so, so let's throw those on vinyl. Let's, let's mix them for vinyl. Let's throw them on. Yeah. I just think it would be what a, what a killer timepiece, right? One, one thing that I was going to add to my list that I left off because I, I, th you know, I thought that you would say something about that was I, I do not understand why they didn't reissue the first album like they just did with Sound of Vinyl with a bonus record that has the demos on it. It well, makes no sense. There's another session too that was also done at Bell Sounds that were much more that were much more rough demos. It's like and, pre it's like pre production stuff. Yes. And it was done yeah. it was done after the Eddie Kramer demos, but it was done right. before the proper sessions began for the self titled LP. This was just I mean, we don't know what they recorded on there. I mean, it's been heavily rumored that they that they cut too many Mondays on there, and we've just we've never heard those. So some of those tracks do appear on the box set. Uh, right off the top of my head, "Let Me Go Rock and Roll" that's on the box set does come from these Bell Sounds sessions, but it's it's something that so I, does Firehouse and with you know the different thing and uh, there's several of them. There's like there's five. Three. There's is there no, five? There's five. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, let I knew me that, know. I, let me know is you're, on there. You're correct. You're correct. Yeah. Let me know. I, I knew. I knew that the box had a couple. But for some reason, let me go rock and roll. Always hundred thousand years. Head. You're you're correct. So it's hundred thousand yeah, years. Five. Let me know. Fire. Yeah. Okay. So, but some yeah. of that stuffs on the box, but there's still other tracks that right. that, that, that have it, been you know it was, I know that you're right. Julian, you know, had his speculation that uh, you know they could have basically. What it seems like is their pre-production. They're in the studio and says, "Here's our live set. Let's call this down to an album." Mm -hmm. So they could have been doing. They could have recorded "Life in the Woods." They yes. could have recorded "Acrobat." They could have recorded any of that stuff professionally in the studio. Yeah. You know, so I mean, there could have been. There's no telling. But anyway, my point is, I do not understand why we're not getting. Th these official vinyl reissues for these 45th and 50th anniversaries with bonus discs that has like the Eddie Kramer demos and or any of that stuff from Bell Sound Studios. E it just release the stuff you've already released. Put it on vinyl, you know. Yeah, so. and one of the things that was was in the mix in my head as I was going through the things that I wanted to cover was expanded editions of any record. Yeah, right. A any yeah. record, you guys. Whatever demos exist on any record, just please. I mean, I know that. A lot of bands have started to do this, right, where they've gone back and either um, I, was it Pearl Jam, I think, who has released a ton of live uh, concerts, Metallica. right? They just what, what's that? Yeah. Well, Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. But I think Pearl Jam, were they actually doing it on vinyl for a while or they were doing it no, on <clears throat> their CD? CD? It, in, it, right. In the early 2000s, they basically released every every show that that they were, you know, they played. 
it was yeah. recorded. It was it was in that whole. Um, what, what were the CDs? What were what was the company that did the Kiss ones too? Oh yeah. Uh, Instant, I live. Them. I, Instant Live, yeah, Instant it was live, in yeah. that era. Pearl Jam yeah, was doing yeah, yeah. their own yeah. themselves and releasing every show right. on CD. So, well, I guess my point is, a lot of bands have put out <laughs> a ton of this extra material, right? And Kiss just never has. So, right. please, we're begging. So, all of that fits very nicely into my number two, and uh, and I'm glad Andrew mentioned Metallica. So one thing that I wish, and I know that all the bootleg guys wish would happen, is there is, for the love of God, no reason there should not be a KISS website where we can go and download, for a small fee, any bootleg audio, video, demos, the whole nine yards. There should be a website, charges 10 bucks a, a record, and just dump everything you have in your archives. You know, there's stuff there for sure. I mean, Paul just found that. Didn't Paul just post a photo a year ago or so on his Instagram where he found a recording of, uh, was it, I don't know if it was Wicked Lester or if it was Rainbow or, you know, so, something, some live recording that we were like, who knew that existed, you know? Yeah, yeah, he was in the warehouse at some point, and he just, for, I think for a couple of days or a day or whatever, was just taking pictures of stuff that he had, quote-unquote, stumbled yeah. across mm-hmm. at the warehouse, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think Metallica does some kind of version of this, don't they, that have a yes. website? I know, you know where yeah. you can download. And Dream Theater was doing it back in the 2000s. Mike Portnoy was putting up uh, um, shows and stuff, and they were pressing them on CD, and I have, you know... A, a dozen of them back here, but there's no reason why Kiss shouldn't be doing this. There's and, and thousands. Funny, there's a there's a dozen Dream Theater CDs, and across those dozen CDs, there's three songs. <laughs> well, fine, but uh, <laughs> so that's you know I wish there was an official. Uh, that's my number two official place where we can go to download officially and pay Kiss, pay them finally for all of these, you know, bootlegs and uh, and get stuff that we've we've never gotten before. <laughs> I think if the Gene Simmons vault was a bigger hit, meaning if it sold more units, I think that would have come because I, I think I think Gene was testing the waters and maybe some of the higher ups in the kiss camp were watching. Saying, well, I don't I, I, I know yeah, that there's a lot of extras with the Gene Simmons vault is, that we don't is. need with what Jason's talking about. Obviously, no, no, it doesn't I, have to be fifteen hundred bucks. It doesn't need to have wheels. It doesn't need to be able to doesn't. not go on an airplane. I agree. So I, I agree with I agree. I agree with both of you. But I think that if if those had sold like hotcakes, they'd be like, well, we got to give the fans this stuff. See, that's, I don't that's, necessarily that's I agree think. with. I don't necessarily agree with I don't that even because think that much of a thought process go, is going into that stuff. Unfortunately, right. I wish there was. I wish there was too. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so anyway. uh, next, next for me, um, and again, this is probably muddled in, you know, copyright red tape and who actually owns the rights and blah, blah, this and that. I just want an official DVD copy of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. I know that Attack of the Phantoms was put on Kissology Volume 2, right. and people say that, that Attack of the Phantoms is superior because it was re-edited, and, and it does flow better as far as the story goes, but uh, <laughs> I just, I want to have uh, Kiss Meets the Phantoms. Flows better. Park. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't take much, does Flows it? Flows better. Yeah. It does. Yeah. The soundtrack is better. I prefer the Kiss Meets the Phantom soundtrack, to be completely honest with you. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because right. here's the thing, that's a snapshot of what these things were in 1978. There just yep. there wasn't a cross promotion of things like that in in the seventies. Just because you were a recording artist doesn't mean that your new material was going to be on the TV special that you were on. There just it just wasn't like that. It wasn't like how it is now. You know, if you're a band releasing a record now, you're going to have a song in the the new you know Xbox game, or you're going to have there just it just didn't exist back then. So for me to be able to buy an official DVD copy of Kiss Meets the Family of the Park would be awesome. I would buy that in a heartbeat. So if it I. came out so it came out tomorrow. So. Do we know? Since again, you guys are deeper into this part of the collecting as uh, and than I am. Do we know if that original film exists someplace? Do we know what? Do we know like could they go back and rescan that in 8K and put out a Blu-ray release and clean it up and do all that stuff? Do we know if it exists? Well, so here here's the thing. Here here's what what I know about this. It was shot on film, so if the original negatives do exist, it could yeah. go up to 4K. For those original pieces of film stock, the highest they can go is 4K. But let me tell you, they're not going to spend the money to do that. 
because it is very costly to go in and rescan a negative and it's very costly to go in and, and do those things. So they're not going to do that. However, if they just, but wanted, how cool would that be? Right. If they actually cool. went in and restored it and gosh, not gonna it would happen. just be great. Not going to happen. But Understood. what would be cool if they could just scan the existing <laughs> negative, which was formatted for TV, which is going to be your regular standard definition, which is what DVDs yep. are. Um, I think that that I think it would cost a little bit of money, but significantly less than going in and upscaling it and, and putting it on a Blu-ray or a high definition format. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but if they just want to put out a regular DVD and, and, and do that, I would I'd buy it in a heartbeat. <clears throat> yeah, I, I definitely would. What's interesting is, though, with all of these movies that, you know, you know, it's t- maybe movies from the 80s that people didn't really care about. Those are being turned into 4K versions now and you wonder what what's the market size for that kind of a move and i i can't even really think of one off the top of my head but you know just think of like a more obscure ish kind of 80s or 90s movies that have even maybe just not even a cult following right so you wonder would the kiss community back something like this enough where you know where we where the the money would make sense well here's where a lot of it boils down to a lot of it boils down to a lot of these films the either the original rights holders have relinquished the rights or it's so cheap to purchase the rights to a certain film to be able to distribute it so that's the thing too like a lot of these um a lot of these films that come out you have to purchase the rights for a certain amount of time nicholas talked about it on, on the last show that he has you know the the authorization to yeah, the license the, the rights, license yeah. for, for for five or six years whatever he said it was so you know for for a lot of these films, it's very, very cheap, or enough time has lapsed where no one has the rights to it, and they could, you know, do this for, for well, cheap. Well, I, I think what Joe is saying though is, if it's so expensive to to take the time to scan something up into 4K and Blu-ray for a movie that nobody cares about, well, is there is there enough support in the Kiss community to to take on that bill of of doing the same thing or even in the 70s nostalgia community or you know as we've talked about there's some overlap with some of this stuff right that people are into you know people who collect mego figures would collect the kiss ones maybe because they're mego collectors and so i feel like there's some overlay there so i guess my argument is is it really that costly uh relative to these other movies that are coming out in 4k I don't know. It just seems like it's a it's a uh, it's the standard now, right? It's like now 4K is the standard, whereas DVD standard revolution uh, resolution used to be the standard. So let's just put it out now in 4K. Just yeah, just, just put re- it out. Just just rescan it and put it out. That's Done. my okay. point. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> do we yeah, have please. the rights to, to that? Is that still? Do we know where that where that? Uh, it was resides. a Hanna Barbera film, but who knows where the rights are now? And just remember sure. too, there's all that original music. Who owns the rights to those music? those musics that that are in there and who owns the rights to you know a lot of the other stuff in there i mean uh the guy that played calvin just passed so um well i i don't think that has you know as far as actors to do that. i'm just saying i'm just saying but, like but, like but you do but you do got to do you know you got to license that you know, the music because this is a, a completely new release and it wasn't written in the contracts back then so you know so you've got there are some rights you know there i just wonder how much of it is Paul and Gene hate it and have no desire to well, if they put any so money much, into it. They put Attack of the Phantoms on Kissology Volume 2. Well, that's true, but that, you know, who knows? Who knows? Interesting. So, Joe, did I decimate your list too? No, 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 that's no. That was a great one. I hadn't thought of that, but I think from a from a Kiss fan perspective, I got to think that that would be one of the ones that would be way up at the top of the list. I yeah. think a lot of people would like to see an improved version. Of of that movie for sure out somewhere somehow that we could all get our hands on. Yep. So no, okay. that, that wasn't on my list. Your turn. Uh, if it's my turn, I'm almost out of ideas. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. But getting back to what we were talking about earlier, we were talking about some of these German represses, the best of solos that are coming out, double platinum. I'd love to see somebody go back and start to repress these guys. So like the oh, Argent- nice. Argentinian rock and roll over. Um, Anything that has a different, interesting cover to it that 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 showed yes. up in other countries, I think would be killer. Why not? Why not continue these releases that Germany has started and come out, out with the Mexican versions, the Argentinian versions, and maybe pick I don't know ten 
10 records and, and create a set out of them somehow and, and redo some of this stuff again with a 2019 or th- 2020 or whatever the year might be sort of a, a marking on it so that it sets it apart from those, those early uh, and original releases. I just think it would be so killer to get that stuff um, in a nice new package somehow. The Argentina and, hotter than hell. Oh, it would be awesome because oh, they all have incredible. those different. They all have those different sleeves. You know, it seems like it was the Wild West back then, and people were using whatever they wanted for for cover art and. Right. But I think it would be so cool, and I'm volunteering myself to go back and and re <laughs> and remaster all of that artwork, and yeah. and do that stuff, um, and lovingly recreate them from you know from the ground up, like the 2014 releases were were you know handled by Universal. Um, yep. I think it would be really cool to do some of that stuff, and and I think the Fisk, the Kiss uh, fan community would love it. So I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I agree. Um, so staying in the vinyl realm, which my last two things are, even though that you know the last two of four, not five, uh, but we'll be able to call five from from these suggestions. So, um, so my my third idea is I would love to see colored vinyl reissues of the five uh, promo-only releases in the catalog. Dude, so, I would buy those in a, tomorrow. In a box set. Yes, box yes tomorrow. that's a great idea. Yes. Yep. In a box that's a great Take idea. My money. Take my money. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I, I personally wouldn't be a big fan of them being color vinyl. I think that's getting a little played, and it feels like it's a little gougy sometimes, maybe. I just want it to be different. Yeah, from yeah. the original, and yeah. and it seems like the go-to thing is to do it in colored vinyl. You yeah. know, if you're going to reproduce the jackets and they're going to look pretty much the same, yeah. other than you're going to have some modern copyright information on the back of it or whatever, I I, I really think you need to to do something different with the vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you do those five, which are you know, help me out. We've got Taste of Phantom, First Kiss, Last Licks. Taste of Phantom. The, Taste, I mean, taste, taste, taste of Platinum. Taste we were just of, yeah, talking taste, about Phantom. Yeah, Taste yeah, yeah. of Platinum. <laughs> taste best of Platinum. Of the solo albums. Rock and Roll Over. First Kiss. Last Licks. And the Summer Tour. Summer Tour. Thing. Summer Tour 76. Yeah. So you yeah. take those five and uh, and you do color different color vinyls or some, some kind of splatter or something like that. You make a killer um, box to slide them into. It's only five records. You know, some kind of hard case box or something that they slide into, and it says the promo LPs or you know, kiss the promos or something like that. I, man, I off the it. shelf, I it'd sell it. out immediately. I buy it. Sell out immediately. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue with with video because for me, I just I always was just obsessed with Kiss video, always. You know, I just I remember it's back a- it. I remember back in the day. You know, you you go down into my basement when I lived still lived at home. And there was a huge VHS rack that was, I think, built for, you know, whatever movies we had in the in the family collection at the time. But once I took over the basement, and that was my KISS realm, I had hundreds of VHS in there. Literally hundreds of VHS. So it, it's always about video for me. So here's another thing that I don't know why they haven't put out yet. And again, muddled in rights and who has this and whatever. Animalized Live and Uncensored. It's Absolutely. The only, it's the only KISS release that has not been reissued confidential extreme close-up all those other great videos from the late 90s early 2000s or late whatever they've all been reissued all of them have but they've never done animalized live and uncensored why who knows what i what i think would be an awesome package because we do have this in our collections now i think they could do two tracks of audio do the original audio track that was released but then also include the fm broadcast in there too be beautiful that would be freaking awesome and i would certainly buy it been tomorrow. it's certainly been done in, in the bootleg collectors where it we've has. got a good good scan from the japanese laser disc yes. and then there's the best quality that somebody had of the of the uh radio broadcast um so there's a good matrix of that out there but it needs to be done professionally yes and and like why uh, isn't that on vinyl too let's make a whole package out of that because that's that's one of these things that came across my yeah. mind when i was thinking about this list is let's put let's put the animalized live show right on vinyl absolutely i think it would be killer because i I feel like that that uh era of the band is um over criminally unrepresented right as as, so i think it would be i think it would be i mean and we know it exists it's got to exist somewhere right you would think all the 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 clean 
audio of that stuff. I think um, Sony owns that. Uh, well, I, I was going to say I think MTV owns it because the, the could be. concert was filmed for MTV because before it was released on VHS in 1985, it aired. There was a 60-minute version that aired on MTV. And here's the thing. I have it somewhere. I have the MTV airing somewhere that, that my brother taped off MTV. I have it with the commercials. Um, I just I have to find it. I, or maybe I don't have it anymore. I don't know. But... Um, and it's got to start with that Eric Card drum beat, just well, like yes. the video. Just like, just like the video. That's how the vinyl has to start. It's got to start that way yeah. and then cut into the crowd noise. And, then <laughs> yeah. and, it's got to. and um, he says, I'll never be able to locate him. But our buddy John Five says he's in the audience. Interesting. Yeah, he says he's in the audience and he, he's seen himself. He knows where he is. But he's like, dude, you'll never find me. Oh, wow. Wow. So, um, so right. maybe so well, cool. I would definitely buy that. Any Me anything too. that has anything to do with Me that, too. that would be killer. Me too. Joe, you got a you got a final one or another one? Uh, I do. This is my last one out okay. of five. Um, but so we've talked about some of these solo releases from from artists in Kiss that have never that have never hit vinyl that were you know that we've ho- that we've hoped would come out, and one of them is Live to Win. I know it's a little bit of a controversial record from first from some people's uh, perspective. Is it a good record? Do we like it? Is it a kiss? Like what? What is this thing? You know, um, but I think the Live to Win uh, record deserves to be to to be pressed and put out on vinyl um, in a in a cool package. Um, you know, fitting of the material. Um, so anyway, I think I think that's that's something that could be really cool and maybe something that Paul could kind of go back and reexamine after. You know, after the tour is over and the Kiss thing is kind of put to to rest as a touring entity, maybe it's something that they could turn their attention to and, you know, put out a very cool box set of that. I remember Live to Win came out at a time where there were very, very few Kiss releases that were coming out. I mean, I know we had the the, the Alive box set at the time. I know Kissology was soon after, but uh, I remember when this came out, I was very excited. And he was doing that little, you know, uh, not I guess you could call it a club tour. He was doing a club tour for yeah. Live to Win, yeah, and awesome. mm-hmm. I was I was like, "This is awesome!" And it was the last time Paul Stanley sounded incredible. Absolutely, you know, I I was working in a record store at the time. Uh, Wait, you were her- you work for in the music business? I didn't know. Nope, no. Nope. First time I was working in a record store. Hearing I was this. Managing not a record for store, his, not not for his entire adult life. Yeah, yeah first time for my. This. I hate both of you. You are both, of course, fired. So, <laughs> the top five recent reasons Jason hates both Andrew and I. No, the top five reasons I'm firing you all. So please, yes, not that cutting be. your pay. Please, <laughs> cut zero. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I remember managing a record store in Hermitage, Tennessee, and and it was 2006 when that came out, and yes, sir. and just I remember the FAQ board being on. Fire, man, posting posting all about that. And and I went down and saw the first show in Atlanta and Doc and Gene were up in the balcony watching from the side. Um it was it was great, man. That show was incredible. I saw just it in New York incredible. City. And Paul sounded City. amazing. Paul sounded amazing. Yeah. All right. So live to win on vinyl. So my last one <clears throat> is also vinyl C D audio related, is and I know just like Andrew has been saying riddled in rights and then you've also probably got how much of this does gene and paul really want out you know not that everybody hasn't heard it a million times but there should absolutely be an official vinyl and cd release with bonus discs of all the demos all the various recordings all the live stuff 100 percent comprehensive get it out of the way do it all in one set of the Wicked Lester album. No? <laughs> no? No? The, the silence is deafening. Y'all are crazy. I would absolutely go nuts over that. There I gotta tell you. That, I, there are things that you go nuts for that I have to scratch my head. Well, you can scratch your head. I guarantee you it'll be the number one most commented thing in these in these comments. People will love it. Let's Let's place a wager. No. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, of course, I'm the one. I'm the one that approves the comments on YouTube. So of I'll course, make sure so you're gonna all of the... <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm not saying it's a great historical document for sure. Of course, it is. But that is some. That's some rough material. I love that record. Oh, but but Jason, 
You love ev- you love everything. You do. You do. We, we can't cause any controversy on this show at all unless Andrew or I stir it up because That's you go, right. oh, oh, I love it. He's like, love oh, my God, I love it. I listen to it every day. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's it's, right. it's the greatest thing of all time. If Peter Chris came out with a big band record where all he did was announce the song, no. and play on it, you <laughs> no. would go, love it. He would oh, love no, it. No, 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 no. Peter back. was so great announcing those songs. It was fantastic. <laughs> go back. He announced those songs with, with such Can heart and such soul. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's great. He's so happy. <laughs> that is not at all how great. I sound. But uh, you, know, you know what's go funny? Back, you, go back to the FAQ when, when One for All came out that? and look at – how I, I mean, I was railing him, just railing how <laughs> no, bad that terrible. record was. I was I was putting in you know track counts. He's out of key here. Uh, this drum fill is out of time. You know, I was I was that jerk back then. You know, we were also so, counting cymbal hits. Who was that I did guy? not count cymbal hits. I can't remember who that was. But uh, no, I I don't support everything. I don't like everything. I don't like that one for all album. I do not like. Nothing can keep me from you, and I do not like I finally found my way. Oh, yeah, but, but Andrew, he just made my point for me because he cannot come up with one more thing in the Kiss world that he doesn't like. Jason, go ahead. We'll wait. Point made. Yeah, yeah, point made. I got nothing. Yeah, exactly. Point made. Exactly. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. So okay. here's he, here's something I'm going to go in a completely different direction than any of my previous ones and anything that you guys ever said. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a huge, huge, huge action figure collector. Uh, Kiss had a, a pretty good, you know, appearance in the action figure aisle in late nights with the McFarland toys and all that stuff. And there was the Love Gun box set and the Creatures box set and you know the the Alive box set, which wasn't very good. Uh, but I do wish that at some point they would release. Marvel Legends type action figures. And if you don't know what Marvel Legends are, that's the company, that's the line put out by Hasbro Toys that does all the classic comic characters and all the movie characters. Uh, and and I, I tell you, they're, they're really awesome. There's not a whole lot of artistic uh, flair put on them. It's basically what you see in the movie is kind of what you get in action figure form. So what I would want, I want a line of Kiss 6-inch Love Gun action figures in the costumes fully articulated and I want the stage, the love gun stage to go along with it. Dude, I was going to p- write that down last night and I was like, I don't know, you know, but I, I would absolutely I buy that. And I would heartbeat. buy that. I mean, yeah. you know, some people, they were out swimming and riding bikes as a kid and I was building kiss stages out of cardboard and duct tape yeah. with Christmas lights. And that's what I was. That's how I played as a kid. You know, people were like, let's play G.I. Joe. I'm like, I'm going to play kiss concert. And I'm going to sit all your G.I. Joes in the audience and make them watch the Kiss concert. <laughs> so, you know, for me, that would have been so, so, so cool. I mean, I know, like, Smythe released a box set where it wasn't very good. I just want something that looks like the Love Gun stage. There's, right. like, there's it, actually a guy that's on our page. I see him at every expo. His name is Mike Mariker. He built the Dynasty stage out mm-hmm. of foam core and all that. And it is amazing. So, Mike, if you're watching this, make sure you drop a picture in the comments because it's fantastic. Yeah, but you know, to have like the the drum riser to go up, yes. you know, the 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 just all of that stuff, the the cherry pickers, all of that stuff, just to work. No, Joe says no. He's he's no, he's I, out of he, he's out of toys. No, he, here's what I'm thinking about the, the cost. Uh, if we were if they if that were to come out and be really cool and done the way that we wanted to with the light up signs that were that were. Um, you know, representative of exactly the type sign that was, uh, let's say they were doing the asylum one or, you know, whatever, let's just make it up. And so th- those box sets would be so expensive. And no, I can just, wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. here's I, what you do, uh, put, have diamond select toys, put them out and have them put out 12 to 18 different kiss figures. And with each kiss figure is a build a stage piece. So you got to collect a whole line of figures to build that stage. That's what you do, but you only get one stage. Yeah, and, and here, here's what here's why you get one. Now stage. here's what the complaint. Here's the complaint. Oh, I wish they would have done this stage or that no, stage. There's no instead complaints. Of that stage. Here's, why are they doing that? Here's why. And here's, I got to buy all eighteen to get the stage. I mean, you could just hear it now. You yeah, might but, as well just light the fuse now on these. Yeah, but here's the thing: in the action figure community, board. that I mean, they uh, Diamond Select Toys released three lines. Three. It's either three or four lines of Ghostbuster figures. And if you bought all the lines of Ghostbuster figures, you got to build the front of the original Hook and Ladder 8, the firehouse. So each figure you bought, you got a piece of it. Incredible. Incredibly detailed. Awesome. 
Yeah, Here's, but how do you how do you do it with Kiss where you only have four members and you only have you know four costumes from that particular era of the you know the Love Guns Alive you, Two you stage? Do, you do you do different costumes, so you do like a love gun, a suits, a destroyer costume. And here's why I'm picking the love gun stage, and here's why all of your arguments are invalid. Even the band says the love gun era is their most loved and their most popular era because when they came back in '96, they chose the love gun era to copy. So let's just let's go back. Let's just do that. Let's have you know have get, get your Gene figure and have him come with half of the steps and then have the Peter figure come with half of the drums and maybe not build the stage top, but have each figure come with a little piece of the stage. So that way you can build it. It would be awesome. I'd buy them all. <laughs> all right. I'd buy them all. Is that the end of your list? That's, I mean, I have one more thing on my list. Um, I mentioned this before. I wish they would put out a history PDF. I really do. So I love reading that yeah. book and I don't want to break the binding anymore. I don't think that's going to make it into the top five essential, essentials. Yeah, so. well, because <laughs> your up. list is exactly the same as Joe's, it's going to make it in there anyway. My so. list is not exactly the same as Joe's. I, I, yeah. Joe did not have Wicked Lester on his list. Oh, Thank God he didn't. Thank God he didn't. Yeah. That's not making it on the top five. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot we're believe that out, And we're editing out this whole action figure nonsense. What do you mean action figure? You're a comic <laughs> book artist, and you're saying action yeah. figures are nonsense. Yes. Listen, he, he's he's not only a comic book artist, yeah. he's a Kiss fan. Yes. And he thinks action figures are nonsense. I, I nonsense. don't understand that because it they go hand in hand together. It makes no sense they to me. They go hand in hand together. Comic books, action figures, and cartoons. Is that, they is that all... a Mego doll that I spy in your display case yeah, back there? Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> I just Thanks for being with us on this episode of Kiss my collectible. Yeah, I just I, I I don't get that. You're you're the only you're one of the only guys I know that you are in the industry, a professional yeah. in the industry. Well, well, I have been in the industry. Let's put it that way. I, I yes, I've drawn some books. And you're the only, literally the only one I know that isn't. I mean, no, don't have a huge collection like I do, but at least dabbles in it, or maybe even the high end statues. You're the only one. <laughs> Couldn't care less. What? Explain that, Joe. Explain Why do it. I have to explain myself to you, Jason? I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> it's a curiosity. I don't. I don't know. I just. I honestly. I just don't think any of them. Any of them have ever looked cool or right. Hmm. Even the. Even like the. Was it sideshow that side did show those super? Right. The, the sideshow, the kiss stuff. Mm -hmm. I just. It's uh, there's always something that bums me out. Like the base is crappy. Or the there's just always like the hair never looks cool. It just to me it just looks like a hunk of plastic or a hunk of resin or whatever it is. That's the the um. It's not even plastic basis. anymore. It's polypropylene now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But I feel like the likenesses almost always suck. Um. I you know I. I so let I, me I, ask if 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 the they perfect, never look cool in my opinion. If the perfect set came out, would you buy it? No. Okay, Probably so ex not. explain that. Because your whole why your you have whole to reasoning to you. Well, his That's whole true. reasoning was they're never good, so they're they're garbage. I don't want them. So if the perfect set came out that met all of that criteria, why wouldn't you then? Yeah, I I think I've talked about it a little bit in the past. I kind of like having things out that I can that I want that I want to display. And to me, the vintage stuff is the coolest. I have very minimal space. You can see it right behind me over my shoulder if it's in frame. Um, to display things. I don't have a kiss room. I never thought that that was cool. Love people who have kiss rooms. Knock yourselves out if you think that's interesting. But for me, it just has never it's never done it for me. I feel like a lot of the stuff is is gaudy and kind of crappy. If I'm to yeah. be honest. So okay. I just I just feel like it looks like tchotchke garbage. Well, you are banned again. Banned. Joe. <laughs> I've just been our, excommunicated. Our third, been... <laughs> third co-host on a Kiss Collectibles episode just That's said, right. your Kiss room is garbage. Throw what, it away. Does that, what does that say about us, though? I, no, we've had, no, we've had... no, no. Now, take, Jason, take it back. I, <laughs> I take never it said back. that. We've I think this. everybody has the... I think, I think what you do, Jason, behind you... Such such that it is is cool. I, <laughs> what what he is. does what Seriously, he does above like, waist I, level. I, it it blows me away when I see these kiss rooms, right? And they, mm -hmm. I mean, you just look around and you see the amount of money that's spent on the stuff. It's amazing, and I on some level respect respect it, right? I but just for me, I just don't want to decorate that way. I just don't. I don't. I don't think it's cool as a look for me. Um, 
but you know that's uh, you know I I've vie. seen I think I think I've seen pictures of John Five's collection right where it's all right. in those glass cases he's got yes. that giant wall that rolls down a uh, that that to me is a respectful and cool way to display your stuff it's consistent it's aesthetically pleasing it's you know it's almost done in a museum quality sort oh, of way. I I totally agree with that so, I would absolutely rather my stuff be displayed like that yeah. absolutely would rather this is I, not. Again, this over here over my shoulder was yeah. put up as a backdrop to the show in haste. Yeah. If you recall any, uh, you know, I have display cases. I want all of my stuff in display cases. Yeah, and I so don't. Why don't you do it? Because I'm lazy. I don't want to get into that. It, so. It's just kind of it's just kind of a, a museum approach for sure. me. And, and, and it's aesthetically pleasing. To me, you go, okay, this is more of a museum rather than hanging busts on the wall or hanging. Gotcha. What, whatever but that, but it that is, can be done tastefully, though. I mean, I just think that a lot of the kiss up is not tastefully displayed, but there are items and there are things that can be done to make it tasteful. Like, what do you think of Nicholas's room? Incredible. I think Nicholas's room is really well done, but again, all that stuff skews. It's all vintage, right? So, so there's a there's a um, there's a museum quality to the way that he's approached it, right? Like it's cool that he's got the bed with the bedspread on it, and right. it's it's like this it's like this historical timepiece, and it's very tastefully done. I guess what I'm saying is when I see, and I, I don't even really like the term, but the Spencer stuff that people mm. hang all over I the place, it ends up looking like two dollar tchotchke on a wall, and I for don't... me that's not cool. But when you respectfully display things and they're all done in a row and it's consistent and from a design perspective it's cool i agree then then to me so i i guess i i might take back my my original statement on if there was a cool action figure set that was put out and i had the room for it and i could put it in a case and it looked badass i might do it okay i might right. do it. fair enough fair enough all right so let's put together our top five essential items that we wish the band were to release Let's start with number five. And I think number five has to be Animalized Live and Uncensored. Agree? Disagree? Well, what what would we cut out then? Would we cut out the foreign, re, the represses that I was talking about, like the Argentinian and Mexican? I think so. I think, I think here's your, I'm going to rattle off my, I'm going to rattle off my top five. And, and we can move these around and, and, and add or subtract. But here's, here, here's what I think is top five. Animalized well, Live and Uncensored. Rock and Roll Party from 1977, a re-release of the first album with the Kramer demos and all that stuff. Which wasn't even on any of our list. It was just something that I just kind of threw out there. Really? I think it should be. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an executive decision being the third co-host and put that in there. Um, the Originals and the Originals 2, I'm grouping that together. And then Kiss Me Stefano. So all of your list and one of mine. Uh, and a part well, of Joe's. Kramer wasn't on mine. Not happening. Originals wasn't on mine. It doesn't matter where the good idea came from. It just matters that it was a good idea. All right, it just so matters so that it was yours. No, no. So right. Let's, all right. So let's talk about it. Let's 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 add. Let's remove. So let's. I think. Do we all agree that the originals box sets? Let's let's make those one Hell idea yes. and let's yes. put that on the list Hell for yes. sure. Hell yes. yes. Can we can we all agree that the Eddie Kramer demos in some form should be on vinyl and yes. exist? Hell yes. yes. Hell yes. Okay. So that's so those that's are two, two things. What else do we agree on? Kiss me to Phantom. Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. okay, so we've got two. So let's say Kiss Me to Phantom. What else? Jason, what else was on your list? The uh, the one that y'all seem to like the most off of my list was the five promo album reissues in a box set. Ah. I think we gotta do that. Okay, so that's okay. Three. All right, right, that's that's three. But then Kiss Me the Phantom is four, no? I don't know if I would go with Phantom over Animal Eyes or not. I think they both need to be there because they're both things that were extremely popular in their... It's so way. funny because the one that I thought was number one on my list, you're like... No way. So. Yeah, there was no. there was quite a bit quite a bit of dead air when that when that balloon was. I cannot first. wait wait to see the comment. <laughs> can't wait to see the comment. Uh, what else was on your list, Joe? Uh, I had lived to win, but I don't think it should make the top five. Yeah. I had the foreign represses of of all the records, but I think that should be usurped by your idea of the promo records. Okay. The promo. Um. So, Man, you Andrew, you guys don't so, think Phantom? I, 
I mean, if we want to say if we want to say Phantom and we want to say, I think Phantom's uh, number one, like without Phantom. It it, it it I guess it, it also depends on how it was done, um, because I don't just think a DVD copy of Phantom is. No, you know, you know a, a DVD, a DVD but, box, which. But which if we be... assume, but if we assume that a cool version of all this stuff is going to be done, that's the, like the best version of this thing is going to be the thing that comes out. So, so let's if we add Animalize and Phantom in there, are we happy? Yeah. Eddie yeah. Kramer, Originals, Promo Box, Animalize and Phantom. Yeah. Jason, are you happy with that? Run no, up as Wicked Lester, but I'll go Runner with up it. As Wicked oh, no, Lester. what what do you want? You 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 want Wicked Lester? He in wants there. Wicked Lester I, in there. I do, it's just because it's the beginning. So, uh, but I, you know, I I get it. A lot of people hate the music, and that's fine. So I, waiting, I'm okay. Keep me waiting. I love that song. So. Of course uh, you do. It's terrible. Point made. Point made again. Yeah, you guys are going to be in for the shock of your life when all of the support comes in for the Wicked Lester box set reissue. Well. Please well, Mike, send all of your hate mail that's directed at me from this episode to Jason Herndon. Jason at... Hemdon. <laughs> yeah. Hemdon. Okay, so we'll, yeah, let's just go with that. So number five being Animalized. Animalized Live and Uncensored. Yeah. Number four, the promotional box set for the five promotional records. No Phantom way. Phantom is not number one on this list. There's no way Phantom is number one on this list. So you it's... better put it somewhere below. <laughs> yeah. You better put it below number one somewhere. <laughs> Here's the, here's the thing, Andrew. Phantom, first of all, it, it's like it's like Wicked Lester. It it's not universally celebrated as something awesome. You know, right. it's most weird, people it's, most people, people think still it's want it. it, and people still want a Wicked Lester box set. I guarantee right, so it. So number one, you know, do you not remember when that box set came out in two thousand one? People went ape shit over having those three finally officially released Wicked remember. Lester. Suits? I don't remember. I do. Okay, so. so number one, the originals one, the originals two. No, no, no. Starting with five. All right, number Starting five, with... Animalized Live and Uncensored. <laughs> number four, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. That's what I would say. Number three, the five promotional titles. That's what I would say. Yeah. That's number four? Oh, and the, reissue, demo. the reissue first album with the Eddie Kramer demos. And number Perfect. one is the reissue of the Originals and Originals 2 box set. Box set, yep. I'm with that. I think that's good. I think I'm that's good, good with list. that. I'm good with that, too. You pieces yeah. of shit. <laughs> so everybody out there in yeah, everybody out there in internet land, what did we miss? Internet what, land. What wasn't on our what wasn't on our list that we should have had that we should have talked about? Yeah, um, it could be I, infinite because you can make up anything you want. Yeah, yeah, I agree. How much do you hate me after this episode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are. How uh, much do you support a one hundred percent comprehensive Wicked Lester box set? That's right. That's right. So let's talk about it. We'd love to hear your comments. Yeah. Jump into the forums over at Kiss My Collectible. Kiss, kiss my collectibles, and uh, yeah, let's let's discuss it. Let's discuss yeah, it. yeah. And and don't forget, make sure you like and subscribe this video, share it on Facebook, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, hit the bell icon, go to Patreon, go to ClickTShop.com. This is all not new information to you. Um, we hope to see you on the next one. On the next one. I said Nicholas last time. You guys are both like, huh? <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> All right, Nicholas. <laughs>